All right. Um, so I wanted to talk through um, how to add operators to um, some of uh, the our community repo here, which I'm looking at. But I wanted to first kind of talk about. Um, so we have this awesome operators repo, and some of you, I think, or probably many of you, have added your operators to this list. What this kind of represents is just kind of like um, a collection of operators that exist out there um, with no information kind of about their um, quality, which versions of Kubernetes they work with, um, you know, how to get them installed uh, other than, you know, hopefully there's a readme um, going on. And so this kind of, uh, if you think about this and contrast it with um, what it would look like to um, install a binary from somebody's Git project, it's kind of like you're running make um, and to get a binary and you have it locally on your machine, um, really not great for like actually sharing these out. Um, so what we want to do is kind of uh, to further that analogy is have the operator version of RPMs or actually packaging this stuff out, versioning it strongly. Um, and so that is what we have a new effort under this community operators repo. Um, this is um, a set of manifests of operators um, that have been bundled up to work with our operator lifecycle manager. And this really means that there, you have a better experience for shipping these operators. If you do get a new version of an operator, um, the cluster knows how to upgrade that um, with a rolling deployment to the new version. Um, so that as folks are putting out bug fixes, um, new releases, that you have a, a stable, sane way of getting that, just like you would do uh, with an RPM today on one of your servers. Um, so documented in um, this repo is a set of um, early steps uh, to accomplish this. Um, and what it really comes down to is um, following this guide right here um, to make a, a cluster service version file for your operator. Um, this uh, doc is, is available on GitHub. You can go read it. I'm not going to read through the entire thing. But what it does um, is have a bunch of metadata about your operator, um, just the versions, um, how it wants to be installed, some of the CRDs that you own. Um, and this uh, section in particular is actually really important. So um, instead of it being the Wild West on a cluster, you know, these CRDs are cluster wide. Um, and so you need to make sure that different operators are not owning different uh, CRDs, especially their instances inside of your namespaces. Um, and so what the lifecycle manager does is go um, kind of deconflict all of these CRs and CRDs that exist on a cluster, um, such that they're only owned by one operator at a time. Um, and so this is how then you can uh, start having operators that um, work with each other um, through these CRD interfaces. Um, another section of this guide is about not CRDs that you own, um, but CRDs that you depend on. Um, and so these are the required CRDs. So if you have a database operator that wants to cooperate with the Prometheus operator, uh, for example, to set up service monitors to monitor the database that you're running, um, you can start expressing all of that inside of this file. Um, other things that are in here are um, just a bunch of other things about um, the APIs that you require um, and then some metadata about minimum versions of Kubernetes that you work on, for example, this min-kube version here. Um, the maturity level of your operator so that you can kind of signal that out to folks um, and then, you know, icons and that kind of stuff. Um, what we want to do uh, as a community is then um, have a list of all of these um, that are tested and known to work well. Um, so inside of this um, uh, community repo, uh, we want to um, run some automation against your operators so that we know that they work against, you know, an upstream uh, conformant kube cluster, for example, um, and those types of things. Uh, and also to uh, power some over-the-air upgrades, that smooth process of actually obtaining a new version of an operator then applying that to your cluster. Um, and so we've got some more information about uh, testing that process. Um, and so that's kind of the, the main uh, part of it is to uh, make sure that we have a consistent way of uh, running all these operators such that folks uh, can take down your operator, um, install it on um, an OpenShift cluster, an Amazon, a Microsoft, uh, an upstream cluster that you booted with um, Kube ADM, um, a COPS uh, cluster, whatever it is. Um, we want to make sure that everybody has a really great experience there. Um, so I'll drop some of these links. Um, into the doc, um, but this is available on the operator framework um, GitHub page uh, under the community operators section. Um, so would love to um, take any questions if anybody has them now um, and also help folks with this process. Um, we've got a number of folks that are experts um, in how to do this and, and some of the benefits of it. 
Um, and so we can do that over Slack or whatever uh, mechanism folks are interested in. Good. Does anyone have any um, questions, comments um, for Rob? Um, we can all, you can always um, reach out on the, the Google group um, and ask questions as well. Um, people are always um, lingering around there um, or in the Kubernetes um, operator Slack channel on Kubernetes too. So um, there's lots of places to get, um, get help um, and um, get questions answered about this. Actually, there's one more thing I wanted to cover, um, which is just kind of interesting, um, is doing this uh, for your operator kind of forces you to uh, think through some architecture, which is pretty interesting. And one of those is um, this install modes. So if you built an operator on the call, you know that you um, have some different mechanisms for what events you're listening to. You're either looking at cluster-wide events, um, you might be looking at just a very specific namespace. Um, and so what you can do is actually um, tell other users of your operator how it understands to listen for those events. Um, so you can run in your own namespace, so basically saying this operator needs to run and watch the same namespace. Um, this operator only listens, knows how to listen to a single namespace, but it can run you know, uh, in a different namespace from that. Um, I understand how to watch multiple namespaces. This is if you had an operator that you want to watch you know, a number of production namespaces um, and you can list those out in a comma separated values. Um, and then I watch all namespaces. Um, so it's a bunch of um, interesting uh, kind of architecture uh, decisions that this is making you think through. Um, and so I think that's just kind of a, an interesting bonus of doing this um, is you can start thinking about how you want to um, best run your operator, what it makes what makes sense. Is it a namespace, uh, all namespaces, for example, it's I want to provide a, a cluster level service like storage um, to the entire cluster. Or is this a very specific operator where you want to run a, a bunch of them, and so maybe I want to listen on a single namespace, that type of thing. That's all. Any questions? 